So here we are with the completed build. This is uh, by Stag Arms, left-handed upper receiver. AR Stoner of uh, free floated handguard. The uh, Craddock Precision uh, RTR barrel in 22 arc. And of course we look we just looked at the uh, gas block in last uh, last part of this series. This is a Huxworks or OSS um, suppressor on the end. And um, of course I got a loophole BX6 on the top. I really like that scope. It uh, seems to be well suited for this uh, particular rifle. Maybe swapping out my put my thermal on this later, but first I need to shoot a bunch of groups and uh, develop a good load. Uh, one thing to kind of point out here is that so on these stag uppers, the um, ejection port cover actually flips up instead of down and it wasn't entirely obvious why that would be until we put the lower on you could see that with at least your standard um, you know right-handed lowers which is all I have if it flipped down it would be in the way of the bolt release here so flips up seems to be no big deal I mean it's just running into my scope mount that's not a problem so yeah, there there it is. Um, you know, at some point I'll probably uh, once I'm happy with everything, probably paint the whole works to match, except for the scope. I don't like painting scopes anymore. I've done it a couple of times. It's a pain and just not worth it. But um, to, yeah, to show you, I've shot it once anyway. Had it in a range once and. I've been shooting, I just grabbed a couple of things, uh, a couple of boxes of factory ammo. This is the Hornaday Black with a 75 ELD and the Hornaday V-Match with the 62 ELD VT. And I'll show you how they did here. This is the very first time I shot it. So let's have a look. This is my first group with the 75 ELD. You can see that is not terribly interesting. Um, same over here. They both shot, both groups shot about 1.3 inches. Not really what I'm looking for. Um, so then I moved on to the 62 grain. Let's see if I can move this thing here. There we go. The 62 grain ELD. VT and let's see what was my first uh, my first group was here um, About three quarters of an inch. That's not bad um, This was my second group and this one is just a Little over an inch because of this guy down here, although I can't I look really close. I can't tell if there's um, if that's a flyer one flyer or if it's actually a split group and there's two there or maybe on one of my shots I just completely missed the paper it seems unlikely but anyway shot three really close and then that um, either way that that one's probably on me so that's not bad and then I shot one more group and the first three shots all went into this little ragged hole here and I thought holy cow that's amazing and then of course you know I did this and then that and you know it still ended up being a good group um you know 619 and um not, not bad at all but of course you know 219 for a three shot group was looking really good until I probably messed it up so shooting that that one I think is going to be a winner um Again, right now I'm just shooting factory ammo just to see, you know, does it like this bullet at all or is it a complete waste of time? From here I can tell that it's probably not worth trying to chase anything with the 75 ELD when I also have the 62 ELD VT that is clearly shooting much better. So 
I'm going to load up some of those in my, uh, let's see, I got you know, boxes of just the bullets. And I have, um, what I'm actually using is Starline. This is Starline Brass in 6.5 Grendel. And I'm just going to run them through my 22 arc uh, sizer to neck them down to 22 caliber. And um, I'm not the first one to do this. It's um, apparently works fine. You know, I've done similar things to neck down 6.5 Grendel to 6 millimeter. So this is same idea. You're just necking it down a little bit further. But anyway, I'm going to load up a ladder of those and see how they do. But you know, so far, this rifle is looking pretty good. <laughs> 